Hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back to the channel. For this video, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch and the fact that ever since we moved into our brand new home, the Switch has been sitting over in our living room. Now, I have the PS3, a PS4, a couple of consoles here, so whether I want to play games on my monitor or record gameplay, that's pretty easy. But because we only had one Nintendo Switch, that meant that I had to take the Switch and the dock and all of that over here, plug it in, and I said, you know what, this cannot continue. So I went over to Amazon and I found this little bad boy, the Ghoulie Kit, wait, wait. Let's make sure I get the name right. The Ghoulie Kit Pocket TV Dock for Nintendo Switch, PD Protocol Avoids Brick, Hyper Trans for 1080p 2K 4K projection, Magnet Transform Design, Supported Phone or Tablet Charging Dock with Air Outlet Black. Big name small dock so this right here replaces the traditional large nintendo switch dock where you got to put the switch console so you can take a look at it on your television so in this video i'm going to talk about the features the price and ultimately does it actually work which the spoilers is yes i think that this is a pretty solid device so before we dwell into this review and we take a look at one of my favorite games for nintendo switch hit on that subscribe button hit on that bell go down to the comment section and let me know if you own the Nintendo Switch, what's your favorite accessory for it? So this here is the Ghoulie Kit Pocket TV Dock. This retails for approximately $25 to $30. I got this as part of a lightning deal. Regular price is about $29.70. You look at the front and you may ask yourself, so where do you put the Switch? Part of the name was Magnet Transform Design. So you Magnet Transform Design it? That doesn't even word, right? It doesn't even make sense. But you take this out, you see it is indeed a magnet. It's all fancy and stuff. So that's where you put the switch. And when you turn it to its back, look at a couple of different things here, including the USB-C power adapter, where you can put the original one that comes with the Nintendo Switch, or you can also buy a third party one, of which I purchased one. And so far it has worked out pretty good. So I'm gonna make sure to leave all the details, links for this and the power adapter in the description of the video. And then right over there in that USB 3.0 port, that's where you can plug in the USB cable for your controller. If you wanna plug a primary third party controller or anything like that, it's got one as opposed to two. So it is technically less than the Switch dock, but I think it's okay. Obviously we have the HDMI out for the television. Based on everything that I've seen, even though there is a dock mode, I think that's more so for smartphones because this does not just work for the Nintendo Switch, but obviously we're on a gaming channel. You're probably wondering about the Switch functionality, but it does have a dock mode thing, I guess to just transport some images. But uh, based on what I've used so far, all I gotta do is put the switch right in there and it's good to go. So I set the price, I went over the details and I said that it gets the job done, right? So I guess it's now time to actually uh, check out some video game footage. So for this video, I'm gonna be playing It'll Do 2 Plus. This is a game that I beat in February of 2018, one of my favorite underrated games on the Nintendo Switch. So let's take a look. And this is It'll Do 2 Plus. It's also got some really cool stuff if you got the physical version, but I don't think you can even buy this anymore. So it's probably uh, gonna cost you a couple of bucks on eBay. But if you like Zelda, more akin to the A Link to the Past days, I think you're really gonna love this game. It is super charming. It's got a map. I, I'm showcasing the beginning parts of the game just to avoid any spoilers, but you can see right off the bat, uh, image quality is pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to what you would get if you had the original Nintendo Switch dock. So I think this is super good because if you're like me and you don't have multiple Nintendo Switches in your home, you're gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna buy a second Switch if I'm not gonna use two of them at the same time. So by having a Nintendo Switch dock that is smaller in fashion, I think it just makes things a lot more comfortable. And I'm gonna take care of this guy right here. This is simply the tutorial part of this game. If you're curious about the story, uh, not too complicated, just uh, you get stranded in an island, so when they say that it is inspired by Zelda, they really do mean it, but it is such a charming game from the graphics to the gameplay to uh, the, the music. I'm a really big fan of that. Uh, part of the key things in the game is the rolling mechanic, this one, where you are temporarily immune to damage when you use that. And I got a heart increase. Nice. But taking a... Uh, a closer detail at the switch dock i think that you got to make sure to do your research because when the switch first came out a lot of people did have problems with it right it was a matter of 
Well, a lot of third-party companies were taking advantage of the fact that the Switch was selling so much. I think it was with Best Buy and other companies. They had some faulty devices that did damage their, uh, their Switch. And Nintendo, as a company, I don't think they're obligated to always help you touch this restore point to activate it. Right. It's been two years. It's uh, I did not intend to choose this game because I played it about two years ago. But when I looked at my save date, I'm like, man, it's already been two years. It's been kind of crazy. But whether you get this Switch dock or any other one, please go and check out the Amazon reviews or anywhere else and make sure you read them pretty well because sometimes these companies are a little bit shady and maybe they, themse they, they themselves with a Z have uh, published reviews that are super not authentic. But I love this about this game, the fact that at the tutorial level, you already get access to a boss battle. And you see with the B, I have this stick, but as you continue to progress through the game, you get some uh, ice spells, you get some fire attacks, you get a bunch of stuff. And the game is relentless. I don't think that, oh, it's like a cute Zelda for kids. There was uh, one dungeon. Man, I was streaming that on Twitch a couple of years ago, which I do have a secondary YouTube channel for streaming in case you haven't followed. Description for all the deets. But I was streaming it and I got so upset that I stopped streaming because I was looking up. I had my controller down on my desk because I was just trying to figure out what the hell do I even do? And it turns out you needed to use like one spell and then another thing and another thing. And I love that, don't get me wrong, but it was this case of like, holy crap. I probably figured that out faster as a kid or I would have than as an adult. Cause I think we tend to overanalyze a lot of that stuff. You saw something that's really cool. When you press these, the health does come back. You saw the map flashing. So when I go over here, it does tell you where to go, but as you can see, I've not actually made it over there, so I gotta make my way over there. And uh, when I first played this game, it was because I'm a big fan of physical game media. I've talked about this on a cast of the past, which is a podcast that I'm involved in. When I found out that Nicalis put a couple of things like stickers, etc., I was like, man, that's super nice. That's super nice. And uh, it was a game that I bought, I think it was actually in New York, and I'm not even talking about the Wii U game hunting trip. That was like, Two trips before that, I want to say. So to be able to look back at this and be like, this is It'll Do 2 Plus. The original game is available now on Nintendo Switch. It wasn't by the time this game came out and I haven't played it and maybe I should. So if you'd like me to actually take a look at that game because I've not experienced it for myself, uh, please go down to the comment section and let me know. But it does seem like that one was more of an experiment for this game rather than just like a full-blown thing. Uh, so I don't know if this is a sequel as much as it is an, a reimagining. Oh no, I went to this area and I shouldn't have, but hey, if you haven't seen the game, you can see it does have different areas. And I really do love the, the art style. I've had a chance to play and beat A Link to the Past, and I've beaten this game. So if there's any other game on the Nintendo Switch that you, you think fits this theme, and you would like me to play it, or even if I don't do a video on it, it's like, hey Juan, if you like that, you should definitely check this out. Like, uh, A Blossom's Tale, I think that's the name, is a game that many people have said is, like, uh, short. This game's short as well, you can beat it in about eight hours, so if you're not looking for a super lengthy game, this is without question a really good place uh, to start out with. And yeah, I know this is not where I'm supposed to go, but I'm curious, leave me alone. Spruce that is. Oh no, I'm, I'm about to die. Okay, we got a heart. This is the type of game as well that it does have areas that you can't necessarily uh, get to now, but you can get there later. So I don't remember if that's a potato. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, I'm gonna have to go back here because I don't think I actually rescued that guy. Although he looks pretty relaxed. You look at that, he's like, he's having a good time. It's like a picnic in a dungeon. Is that a thing? Hashtag picnic in a dungeon or something, but let's go back here, just progress for a couple more minutes. But uh, going back to the dock, what I love about it is that I do have the Nintendo Wii U for which you know I'm a big fan of it, and I have a dock for it to charge it. So the fact that I have this and alongside my my Wii U, you know, I have the Switch and the, and the Wii U, and they really do look like a happy family, and that makes me happy. 
Does it make you happy? Let me know. Am I gonna die before I finish recording this video? Probably. Let's take a picture here. Snap. Do not roll the down the slope. So do not. So I am gonna roll. Oh yeah. Whenever a game tells you to not do something, I think we are obligated to actually do it, right? Ooh, I got a cave scroll. Okay, come on. There's gotta be no heart. What the hell? What the hell, guys? Seriously. I was originally gonna do either this game for this video or Remy Lore, Lost Girl in the Lands of Lore. I think that's another underrated game for the Nintendo Switch. And I'm gonna try my best to really not just focus on the mainstream games for the Switch. Cause it's like, hey, guess what? Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild are good games. You don't need to come to my channel for that. So whether it be something that I experience for myself and it's super cheap, you know, the Switch has a large amount of game deals happening consistently or it's something that you recommend and I check out for myself. Uh, that That's going to be something that I'm going to focus on for the Switch. I think that Nintendo makes us happy. It is going to be interesting to see what happens in uh, 2020 in regards to the Switch. You know, uh, they keep saying that there's not going to be a Switch Pro or anything like that. So what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm not a game journalist. People, I just play video games. So let's at least get to the next dungeon. Okay, okay, can we get there without dying? Yeah. Let's at least get to the next dungeon so you can take a look at the insides. And you can see, once again, full of charm and personality. Does it borrow many things from A Link to the Past? I think borrow is um, a bit of an understatement, right? But you can't deny the fact that you look at this game and you gotta be compelled to play it. It is available uh, digitally as well. It's out on Steam PC, so if you don't have a Nintendo Switch and you're watching this video because because you're subscribed, so mwah, thank you so much. It is available on other consoles, but that's going to be doing it for the quick look at the Ghoulie Kit Pocket TV Dock for the Nintendo Switch, PD Protocol Avoids Brick, Hyper Trans for 1080p 2K 4K projection, Magnet Transform Design, Supported Phone or Tablet, Charging Dock with Air Outlet Black Dock, for the Nintendo Switch, it is worth it at about $25 to $30. So if you see this for $29 something, that is the average price. If you see it for less, I would definitely suggest that you get it. At the same time, if you've gotten your hands on another dock and you would like it to uh, recommend it to me or others, please go down to the comment section. This is all about the community. So hopefully you appreciated this video. And if you like what I do, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit on that bell, and maybe even consider checking out my secondary streaming channel or the podcast that I'm involved in at youtube.com slash a cast of the past. So up until next time, thank you for watching, supporting, and take care everybody.